My own feeling is that any form of spirituality which cannot harmonize it with deep science is finished. It, it, it's finished. Science is so powerful. It's achieved all of this. And it's the greatest achievement of the human imagination, without doubt. So any form of spirituality will be redundant unless it can understand how it fits with science. And the good thing is, it fits perfectly. Now, let me be clear. <laughs> Fluffy, superstitious spirituality does not fit with reductionist, materialist, narrow science. They are never going to fit. But deep spirituality and deep science, these fit perfectly. The problem with a lot of science is the same which has happened with religion. It's, it's, there's this deep spirituality, but what most people have got is religion, which is superstitious nonsense. With science, there's this deep science, which is incredible, but what most people have got is an outdated, reductionist, materialist idea that science is going, look, it's just this, and whereas actually, of course, science is saying the opposite. It's going, this doesn't exist. That reductionist, materialist view of science has been outdated for 150 years. Certainly 100 years since the quantum physicists have gone. It's, it would be these guys, the, the greatest minds of their time, clearly going, there is no such thing as matter as we understand it. So that's finished. And this reductionism, which you see everywhere, which goes, it's just. So you're talking about emotions. So you're in love, but that's just chemicals in your body. Mm. So what, if you showed me a chemical chart, I'd feel love? No. It's not like that. But clearly it's something to do with the chemicals in my body. But it's not just, it is the chemicals in my body, but it's not just the chemicals in my body. It is also a whole lot more. And in the same way, you know, this is matter. But it's not just matter, it's also a whole load more. So the reductionists do that to reality and try to understand it by reducing it like this. The superficial spirituality is just off in la-la land, really, and not, that's never going to fit with any of them. But there's also a reduction of spirituality, especially around non-dualism. A lot of non-duality is reductionist in the same way that materialist science is reductionist, because it goes, it's just an illusion. It's just all one. But it's not just all one. It is also all one. It is also all many. Clearly, just look. <laughs> it's obvious. What could be more obvious? And what I see is that it's like reductionist science destroys life by cutting it up into smaller and smaller pieces until it's all gone. And reductionist non-duality destroys life by sucking it all into one big oneness until it's one meaningless blob and it's all gone. And claims to have explained it somehow, but it hasn't hasn't done anything. It's just reduced it to nothing. What we want is a, what I call a paralogical approach, which is this both and. Sees the paradox of the situation. So that it's not just, it's also. Now, if you take a deep spirituality and a deep science, which has been articulated by people like Niels Bohr and Schrodinger and Einstein and all of these great men and women, and put it with a deep science, of deep spirituality, they fit perfectly because one of them is what happens if we go outwards objectively into the world and look at it. And one of them is what happens if we go subjectively within the self and look at it. And in both cases, what you end up with is that there is a field of being, which is the mystery, of which we don't know what it is, but we know that it is. And it is arising in all of these separate forms. And through the evolution of the forms, it has become conscious. So that there are centers of consciousness arising within the field of being. Now, if you talk about that in scientific terms, that would be an energy field, or which arises as matter, which then forms these bodies, these bodies become conscious, boop, it's now conscious and the universe is looking at itself. If you talk about spirituality, you come back into yourself, you go, oh, that there's a self, there's a deep awareness, oh, there's, a, there's one awareness within which everything's arising as a dream. It's imagining itself to be all these forms, and through the forms it imagines itself to be, it is now conscious. But these are basically the same thing from two different perspectives. There's a fundamental unconscious oneness, and it's unconscious because it's not separate. Because separateness is consciousness. Without the separation, without 
a subject and an object, it's unconscious, which is arising as these separate subjects. So here we are, we're different subjects arising in the one field of being. Are we separate? Yeah. But we are also, on a deeper level, we're all the field. We're all the field of being. And the awakening is about coming back into it and going, oh yeah, I'm the oneness as a centre of being, meeting you, who is also the oneness arising as that centre of being. How delicious. We're different and we're not at the same time. Fantastic. What a great effect. <laughs>